Hello everybody, my name is Sinigo Uriarte. I will talk about lateral ligaments of the ankle and I will start my video with a small reminder about uh, lateral ligaments uh, anatomy. So, um, there are several ligaments in the lateral aspect of the, the ankle, but the most important by far is the uh, anterior talofibular ligament. This ligament starts in the anterior side of the fibula and uh, with, the, with an horizontal direction. Uh, the direction of this ligament is the same direction as the uh, sole of the foot. So we must place the probe um, with this direction to have a good view of this ligament. Don't forget there are uh, usually two bands of this ligament, the superior one and the inferior one, and sometimes this inferior one is, uh, has um, a bridge with the uh, calcaneo fibular ligament. Okay, so if you are searching this ligament and you have a nice view of this ligament, don't forget to go upwards and downwards till you, uh, if you don't, uh, sometimes you will lose um, pathology. Okay, so this is the first ligament we, we need to, to check. And okay. To do so, we will place the probe over the fibula and then we will uh, lie uh, over the talus. In this, uh, orient with this orientation, if we are parallel to the sole of the foot, we must uh, move the probe downwards and upwards. And we need to see this image with the fibula here and the talus. This is the this black image is the, the cartilage and you can see between the fibula and the talus this uh, hyperechoic uh, structure here this is the this is uh, lateral um, fat usually hyperechoic and this is the first image you need to see once we have this image if we are properly oriented with uh, the same axis of the sole of the foot then we move the probe upwards and downwards you will see a, a tense ligament as you are going to see just now here with these fibers and this is a normal ligament with this slightly hypochoic image if we compare with the fat with this fibrillar pattern okay and this is the this is the image we must seek below we will have the um, capsule the sorry the joint because this ligament is a reinforcement of the capsule okay so this is the anterior telefibular ligament don't forget to go upwards and downwards to check all this area okay once we have checked this ligament then we must check the second ligament the anterior tibiofibular ligament this is a component of the syndesmosis uh, and uh, uh, stabilizes the syndesmosis. Okay, so, uh, this um, the affection of this ligament is called the high sprains of the ankle. So once we have the, the anterior tibial fibular ligament, we turn the probe 45 or 50 degrees upwards, and we will be between the fibula and the tibia. And if we are properly oriented, we should see this ligament. Okay, this ligament has again two components: an inferior and a superior. Okay, and this is very important because you can have, you can, uh, you must notice the affection of this inferior one. Uh, it will cause this. Um, if it's affected, it can cause. Um, Okay, just forget it. <laughs> we will continue. Okay, and we turn the probe 45 or 50 degrees, and we will see this anterior tibiofibular ligament. Okay, and this is the image, this is the, the fibula, this is the talus, and once we turn the probe 45 degrees, you have this image between the fibula and the tibia. As you can notice, we, 
we start at the tailors and the tailors disappears and the tibia appears here and this is the image we must reach anterior anterior inferior talofibular uh, tibiofibular ligament but there are other ligaments we must check with the same mechanism of lateral sprains we also can have the calcanocuboid ligament and bifurcate ligament injured. In the chopart joint, these two ligaments are also very important and usually are uh, forgotten. So, if the patient complains about more anterior pain, not at the location of the anterior talofibular ligament, but distally and inferiorly, always check these ligaments. You can have a very, very good image with high resolution ultrasound and it's very uh, it's sometimes difficult to see these ligaments by MRI <clears throat> so you start placing the probe over the uh, hyperechoic uh, cortical of the calcaneus and then go distal till you reach the joint between the calcaneus and the cuboid bone once you are there then you move the probe upwards and downwards did you see a very thin uh, hypo a very thin image which will be the dorsal calcanocuboid ligament below the pedius muscle at this level this ligament the, calcane the dorsal cal cal calcanocuboid ligament is very very thin is what is uh, is wide but very thin okay this is the dorsal calcaneocuboid ligament, this ligament here. And as you can notice, this image here is very subtle, sorry, it's very subtle, okay? And um, because it's uh, a normal one, if it's injured, you will notice an, a thicker hypocoic ligament and it's easier to see. This is the pedius muscle. This is the cal calcaneus and this is the cuboid. Once we have checked this ligament, we can go upwards till we see the second ligament in this area. This is the bifurcate ligament. The bifurcate, bifurcate ligament has two components, the calcaneo cuboid ligament and the calcaneo scaphoid, uh, sorry, and calcaneo uh, navicular uh, component. Okay, it's very important to check its insertions in the uh, calcaneus bone because usually the pathology will be here and this is the image with ultrasound this is the calcaneus this is the um, the margin the edge the superior and exterior edge of the calcaneus this is the cuboid bone on its dorsal aspect and you can see this very very thin ligament here below the pedius muscle and this is a normal one is surrounded by the uh, fatty tissue, hyperechoic, and again, if it's uh, affected, it's injured, you will see a thicker hyperechoic ligament. It's uh, easier to see, okay? Always check the integrity of the cortical of the calcaneus and the cuboid bone, because very often the ligament will be uh, with edema, but we, you will have an avulsion of the bone itself. It's very, very common to see these images here, okay? So always take a look at the cortical, at the, of the bones of the calcaneus and the cuboid bone. Okay, the talonavicular ligament. This is uh, the, the, another ligament uh, that uh, is worth to check it because this time is not in the inver inversion uh, mechanism but in forced uh, plantar flexion, okay? Um, and this ligament um, can be injured in these movements. I usually start placing the probe, sorry, I usually start placing the probe over the tibia and I checked the recess, the anterior recess of the joint. Once we have checked there's no um, fusion inside the joint, sorry, we move distal till we see the head 
of the of the talus and the uh, navicular bone and here we can see this ligament is a very wide ligament okay between the talus and the navicular bone and again usually it's normal uh, shape is a thick hyperchoic fibrillar pattern and it's swollen uh, hypochoic or with edema it's because it's torn or injured okay and to finish the calcaneofibular ligament again the anatomy the calcaneofibular ligament is a um, um, narrow ligament narrow and long ligament its, it's uh, origin is in the fibula in the tip of the fibula and usually has a posterior slightly posterior direction and inserts in the calcaneus okay sorry it has a close relationship with the peroneal tendons peroneal tendons go uh, below um, the um, the tip of the fibula below the, the lateral malleolus and when they turn lateral they pass just above the calcaneo the calcaneo fibular ligament here so they ha they have a very close relationship and if we follow the peroneal tendons once we we see the peroneal tendons and we see the cortical of the calcaneus between the cortical and the tendons we will notice this ligament okay why i uh, speak about this ligament the later one okay because i usually perform the evaluation of these ligaments with the patient in a supine position with the sole of the foot over the table okay and in this position it's very very easy to check the anterior telofibular ligament the anterior tibiofibular ligament uh, the uh, calcaneo uh, sorry the dorsal calcaneo cuboid ligament the bifurcate ligament and the talonavicular ligament but this ligament we must change the position and this uh, and this is why i use uh, a different position and this is why this is the last ligament i check i ask the patient to extend the knee i place um, um, a pillow between the the leg and the the table and uh, the the foot is free so i can place the probe laterally without have problems without having problems with the table and uh, it's very useful because I need to ask the patient to force the dorsiflexion of the of the of the ankle, and that's why, that's because um, in this position, the calcaneofibular ligament gets tense. In uh, uh, when the patient is um, is not in this position, the ligament is um, is not tense. Sorry. And uh, it's very difficult to check. So we ask the uh, force the doxy, uh, force it, doxy, dorsiflexion, then the ligament gets tense, uh, push, pushes the tendons um, towards the probe, and it's easier to see. Okay? In dorsi, we place the probe, we move the patient's ankle, and as you can see here, the tendon becomes tense and pushes the tendons ligament gas tense and this is the video of this maneuver we follow these are the peroneal tendons okay. we follow the tendons you can see here the cortical of the calcaneus and this something here between the tendon the peroneal tendons and the calcaneus something here is very uh, with an, uh, a bad view a bad image this is the calcaneo fibular ligament here so we need to ask the patient the dorsiflexion and then it becomes tense and we can see a fibrillar pattern a very very good fibrillar pattern and we can see how this ligament pushes the tendons superficially and we can check this uh, tendon very accurately this ligament sorry very accurately and that's all that's the that's the explanation about the lateral ligaments of the 
of the ankle and how to explore them. I hope you find it useful and you try to check all these ligaments. Don't forget the calcaneocuboid, calcaneocuboid a dorsal calcaneocuboid ligament and the bifurcate ligament. They are very important and usually for forgotten. Thank you very much.